sing a million songs about your grace. But I could never comprehend the price you paid. It was all for me. It's the kingdom of darkness against the kingdom of light. I'm talking to the hour. I'm talking to the urgency. We have to arise and we have to be defenders of the faith. And God gave us the control. God gave us the charge. stand for what is right and I'll stand for what is just and I will shout it from the mountaintops and I'm going to keep on shouting it in the name of Jesus Christ until we have our liberty and our freedom as Christians in this country. Because I'm doing this not just for myself, I'm doing this for my children and for my children's children. You treat this Christian thing casually. You are not making a statement. You are not fighting. You are not standing. You are not defending this holy ground. You are living on an emotional level. No, it's not what we need right now. We need the Christians to stand up, to take a stand for this holy ground, to fight for our future. Come on, welcome to Harvest George 2022. Come on, how many of you are glad that you are here tonight? We want to welcome each and every one of you from all over the Garden Route and many other places. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on this beautiful evening right here in George. Thank you for inviting your friends and your family. We'd also like to welcome those joining us online tonight. We know that you will have an amazing time with us in God's presence. Come on. We would like to welcome our pastor, our leader, Pastor Ad Bosso. Pastor Ad, we love you. We thank God for you, your love for the church, your commitment, your example, Pastor, being a strong and courageous voice, being brave 
in the face of opposition, fighting for this holy ground that we stand on and fighting for future generations. As your CRC family, we love you, we honor you, and we thank God for you. Come on, let's welcome and honor and thank God for the gift, Pastor Ad Bosov, in our lives. Amen. We also welcome David Bosov, Pastor Ad's son. Come on, let's welcome David as well. Pastor Ad's family, we honor them, we love them. We want to welcome every CRC pastor, many, many CRC pastors from all, all over the country. Thank you for your support. Thank you for being here tonight. We thank God for you. And then we would like to welcome the CRC amazing award-winning CRC music team. Come on, let's thank them. They're going to lead us in amazing praise and worship tonight. So as we lift our hands, we give over to CRC music to lead us into the presence of God. Amen. Wash away all my tears, Jesus, you are the reason. Oh. 
não nega Jehovah Prince of Peace Emmanuel God with us Oh we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. Oh, Jesus, we honor you. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. You are welcome. You are welcome. Be exalted. On our prayer. Oh, Jesus. Jesus.
people in South Africa. Give yourself a big hand clap. Come on, after rain all day, you are here tonight. That shows there's a great, great hunger in this valley for God. In Jesus' name, amen. It is, um, you know, if I, if, 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 if I woke up somewhere and I looked at you, I would thought I'm in the Alps somewhere tonight, because so many of you have um, a, a mess of your cop. Ni mess ni, a mess, M-U-S. I want to say that you are wonderful, and it's amazing to be here tonight, and I know that God is going to do something great in your life tonight. Come on, if you are ready, if you are expectant, give the Lord a mighty praise. You know, I've learned that all we need in God's presence is a moment. And some of you have brought your friends and your relatives And you are believing for those people to be saved. And we declare tonight that this is holy ground. And we declare tonight that God is going to touch every person that is unsaved and every person that is lost. During this COVID time, God said to me, a lot of my people have become lost again. And I'm on a mission in 2022 to push a reset button in the hearts of God's people. South Africa, Christians of South Africa, we have to rise and shine like never. We have to be defenders of the faith. We have to stand for this holy ground. Come on, stand to your feet tonight and give the Lord a praise in the name of Jesus. So I want to talk to Jonah tonight. I want you to take your seats. Let's get into the Word. And we know that God's Word is blessed. And uh, I apologize that it is cold tonight. But you know, I'm not a maker of the weather. So I will be brief and to the point. As Elizabeth Taylor said to her, I think Richard Burton the second time. She said, I'll only keep you a little while this time. Jonah chapter 1. And I want to talk about a great man of God that lost himself, that walked away from God, and then also how he came back to God. A lot of people who have to come back to God, a lot of our leaders in South Africa, a lot of pastors, a lot of bishops, a lot of businessmen. This COVID pandemic has not been an easy time for anybody. 
I know there are many of you sitting here tonight. You've lost loved ones. You've been touched by this. Many people have lost their livelihood, have lost their businesses. But I want to tell you that God is a God of restoration. And I want to tell you tonight that God loves you and that you are on God's mind and that God is not about to abandon you during this time. So we read Jonah chapter 1. And the Bible says in verse 1, The word of the Lord came to Jonah, the son of Amittai, saying, Arise and go to Nineveh, that great city, and cry out against it, for their wickedness has come up before me. But Jonah arose to flee to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. Imagine running away from God. But many people are. They don't even realize it, but they are not where they were. Many people in our, in, our, in our world, I just came back from Los Angeles a few weeks ago, and Christianity for the first time in the history of America does not have the primary voice. For the first time, the culture is being shaped by social media and by Hollywood. And if you see what Disney just released, a public statement, I suggest if you have children, you go look at that public statement. It should horrify you that the spirit of the world wants to get its hands on your children. And that's why we say we are fighting for generations to come. We are not just fighting for ourselves. We are fighting for our sons and our daughters. And if we stand up against this government, it's not because we are anti our government is because we are pro the future of the church in South Africa and we are pro the future of generations that still have to be born. So we cannot be silenced. We cannot be pushed in a corner. We cannot be dictated to by politicians. Hey, can I remind you that God never sent a politician to save the world. He sent a Savior and His name is Jesus Christ. Come on, if you love Jesus tonight, jump on your feet and give Him a radical praise. Come on, George. So a Jona in Afrikaans pak tekkies uit. Hy hart nou weg van die Heere. Hart nou kaap toe. Nee, ek speel so maar. <laughs> He's running from God's plan, God's presence, and God's purpose for his life. Bible says he went down to Joppa and found a ship going to Tarshish. So he paid the fare. I want you to remember that. There's a price to pay when you run from God. And he went down into it to go with him to Tarshish from the presence of the Lord. We're going to talk about your Tarshish tonight. Not Tarshish where you have breakfast with your girlfriends. But Tarshish, the place where people go hide from God. The place where people run away from God too. But the Lord sent out a great wind on the sea. And there was a mighty tempest on the sea, so that the ship was about to be broken up. Then the mariners were afraid, and every man cried out to his God. Hallelujah. I want to tell you, just like the days of Elijah, those prophets can cry out. People can cut themselves. People can shout. But there's going to be no voice. People can come with their scientists. People can come with their knowledge. People can come with their wisdom. But there will be no deliverance outside of the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, because there's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. And the Bible says God has highly exalted him and given him the name that is above every other name. That at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow of things in heaven, things on the earth and things under the earth, and every tongue shall confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Oh, you may deny him today, but one day, whether you are a king, whether you are a prince, whether you are a businessman, a director, one day we will all die level and we will stand before the judgment seat of Christ and we will give account for the lives that we live. Come on. More than ever, the church has to elevate the name of Jesus. More than ever, we have to lift up the name of Jesus. More than ever, we have to put our differences aside and forget about the tag that you wear it. Carry Dutch Reformed, CRC, Anglican, Presbyterian, Catholic. It matters not. What matters is that you are washed by the blood of Jesus. 
What matters is that you are born again. What matters is that you are heaven bound. What matters is that you're a child of God. Oh, come on. The Bible says we can rejoice because our names are written in the Lamb's book of life. Come on, I know you are cold up there in that stadium. Give the Lord a praise. Warm your hands. Warm your heart. For two years, we've seen people cry out to their gods. In South Africa, many people have left the faith and returned to former ways of worship. So everybody's crying out to their God. They are throwing cargo overboard. And Jonah had gone down. Third time we read the word down. Into the lowest parts of the ship. Because that's where you're going to end up. When you run away from God, it's going to take you down a path you don't want to go. I'm going to say it again. When you run away from God, it's going to take you down a path you don't want to go. So if you're in matric this year, you're not going to the plate rage. Say amen tonight in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And he had lain down and was fast asleep. So the captain came to him and he said to him, What do you mean, sleeper? Arise and call on your God. Perhaps your God will consider us so that we may not perish. It's an amazing thing. Jonah is a great man of God. As a matter of fact, Jonah gets a bad rap because all we read about Jonah is this moment in his life. The word Jonah means gentle dove. He's actually the prophet of Israel. And he has served his God faithfully for over 40 years. And he stands as the voice of God for the people of God. And he stands in opposition to the Assyrians. Nineveh is the capital of Assyria. Well, the Assyrians, the Assyrians were cruel and vicious people. When they conquered a city, they would skin people alive. They would rip people's tongues out. They would crucify people, burn people alive. And after they conquered a city, they would put all the skulls of the people they killed outside the gate of the city as a statement of fear. Yeah, God comes to Jonah. And remember, I'm going to say it again. Jonah is not a sinner. Jonah is not doing anything wrong. But Jonah does not like the conversation that God is having with him. Because Jonah has positioned himself politically to stand opposed to the Assyrian kingdom, which was the right thing to do. And your God comes to Jonah, and God says to him, now you go to Nineveh. Now think about that. When, when, when I was raised up in apartheid South Africa, and I go for yourself, and I'll believe my quad board, there's a belief. Ek is arm Johannes Jacobus Boshoff. Ek is Afrikaans. Echt Afrikaans. Ek sê niks beter as iemand nie, baks echt Afrikaans. I was raised a certain way. Then Jesus comes into my life, and the very people I was taught to hate, God calls me to build a church and open the doors for everybody and anybody, and to build a church for all people in the name of Jesus Christ. Well, that's back in 1988. When I did that in Lady Brand in those years, Lady Brand where I started in the ministry in 1988, actually started 1986, the church 1988, over Lady Brand there was Afrikaner Lady Brand. So we start the church and God says to me, build a multiracial church before the ANC comes into power. And I thank God that I can stand with a clear conscience and say that the ANC, no politician opened my eyes concerning racism. It was Jesus Christ. When I found Jesus, I saw the light and I saw that people were born equal and that all people are equal. We all hail from God. The color of your skin does not matter to God. When you get to heaven one day, there's not going to be a compartment for white people a compartment for Greek people, a compartment for Spanish people, a compartment for Zulu-speaking people. We are all going to be together. So we better get along on planet Earth and put our divisions aside and our prejudices aside because it can stop us from the greatest revival that South Africa has to see if we hold on to our prejudice and our pain and our hurts of yesterday as Jonah did. So Jonah is a good man. Jonah is a godly man. But Jonah has a problem with God for once in his life. 
And God says to him, go this way, and Jonah runs that way. And God does two things, two W's, because God loves his prophet, and because God will never give up on his prophet. God will never give up on you. Doesn't matter what you do. Doesn't matter where you've been. Doesn't matter how low you've sunk. And God does two things. Number one, God himself sends a wind. <laughs> you know, sometimes trouble is not caused by the devil. Sometimes trouble is caused by our own disobedience. Sometimes the only time that you're going to come to your senses is when you're in a storm. So Jonah finds himself in a storm and everybody's in the storm, but Jonah's asleep. Think about it. How many people are going through difficulty? They're not crying out to God. They're asleep. Spiritually, they're asleep. You know, during this COVID time, we tried to get the churches open. I had meetings with the president, with other religious leaders, 11 meetings during this COVID lockdown to try and fight for the safe, responsible opening of churches. And you know who fought me? It was other ministers, other religious leaders, other pastors who didn't want churches open. And the result of that is that we've taken a step back in the area of Christianity, but we are going to come back stronger than ever. We are going to preach louder than ever. We are going to see more people saved than ever. We are going to reclaim the territory we lost over the last two years. Oh, come on, shout amen in the name of Jesus Christ, because it's not okay. It's not okay what happened the last two years where people were not able to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ and get saved. So the first thing is God sends a wind. And I say this to people all the time. You know, if God opposes you, you're not going to win the battle. Ask Jacob. Sometimes the very thing that stands in your way of blessing is God. And you're not going to get around God. You're not going to get underneath God. You're not going to get over God. If God has a plan for your life, then God is going to have His way. Oh, you, can, you can run the other way. You can take money and you can buy a boat. You can take money and you can go buy a house at the sea. You can take money and you can go try and take it easy. But I'll tell you, when you move outside of the will of God, there's a price to pay. Jonah had to pay a fare to go to Tarshish. You read in the Bible, the steps of Jonah when he runs away from God, you see the word down five times. Jonah runs from the presence of God. He goes down to Joppa. He goes down to the mariners to pay a fare to go to Tarshish. He goes down into the ship. Then he goes down into the lowest part of the ship. And then he goes down into the depths of the ocean when he's thrown overboard. And then God prepares the second thing because God loves his prophet. God loves you tonight. He prepares a whale. Hallelujah. He prepares a safety net. His mercy is available even though Jonah is running away from God because I want to tell you tonight, my dear friend, there's no place you can run from the presence of God. David said, if I ascend into the heavens, God, you will be there. If I make my bed in hell, God, you will be there. If I take the wings to the uttermost parts of the earth, even there your hand will lead me and guide me. If I say darkness will be night unto me, even darkness will become light unto me, God. Because you will never leave me, God. You love me in spite of me. You love me because of me. You sent your son 2,000 years ago to bring me back to my senses so that I can realize that the pathway of sin leads to death. Romans 6.23, the Bible says, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So what happened in this COVID? Many people returned to former things. Many people became cold. I know it's cold tonight, okay? Matthew 24, the Bible says, one of the signs before the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is the love of many will wax cold. It's like you talk to many Christians tonight, uh, today, and it's like they hear, but they don't hear. 
And you say, don't you understand the urgency of the hour? Don't you understand you have to get back to church? Yes, pastor, I hear, I hear, but they don't hear. It's almost like a veil of deception has come over people where they don't hear, where it doesn't matter, where their Christianity no longer matters the way it mattered pre-COVID. We get, but we better get it right. We better get the remnant fired up. We better get people, God's people, fired up. We better get those that are still in love with Jesus Christ fired up. Come on. We better get ourselves out of bed on a Sunday. And we better dress up on a Sunday and show up in our churches on a Sunday and worship up on a Sunday like you do tonight, no matter the weather. So Jonah runs from the presence of God and I've learned that when people run from God, they always run to a place. And his place was Tarshish, whatever that was. Place of comfort, place of discouragement like Elijah, a place of old things, returning to former habits. You know, God understands isolation. God understands people's pain. But for you to experience God's full restoration, you need an honest conversation with God. And you better listen to me tonight. Because God cannot ever take you further than your honesty. <laughs> he has Jonah. It's not the picture that you have of Jonah uh, that you read in your children's Bible where Jonah is sitting with a little table and there's a little lamb and he's writing the book of Jonah. How many of you remember those pictures? No, 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 no. You read the Bible, you see Jonah. He's, if, you, if you see in Jonah, he, he talks about the seaweed is wrapped around his head and, 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 and the water is up to his, to his chin, to his jowls, literally. He's, he's just in there for three days in digestive juices of a whale that's trying to digest him, trying to kill him. And it takes him three days to come to his senses. I mean, if I, if, if I was thrown overboard and I fell into the sea and a whale swallowed me and I'm sitting there, I don't think, I don't know if it's going to take me three days because I'm going to get seasick firstly in the whale, right? But it indicates his stubbornness because strong people tend to be stubborn as well. And sometimes the storm has to become more severe before people will respond, but it does not have to. Jonah never had to be cast overboard. The first choice Jonah had was when everybody cried out to their God, Jonah could have prayed as well but he would not pray. Think about it. He was angry, so angry that he would not even pray. More than that, he's in the worst storm of his life and he's asleep. <laughs> I mean, everybody's crying, everybody's panicking and Jonah is asleep. Are you asleep tonight, oblivious of what is happening in the world? That people are dying without Jesus Christ? Are you sitting in a crisis situation and it's like your situation wants to digest you and things are becoming worse and worse and worse and still you are sleep, asleep? Tonight it's going to change because God's mercy is here and God brought me here and you showed up here tonight to hear this message for you to come to your senses, for you to come and cry out to God, for you to come tonight and get right with God, for you to come tonight and, and, and reset your life in the presence of God. So after three days, listen, after three days in the whale's belly, Jonah begins to pray. And he cries out to God. And he says to God, God, I will vow what I promised. Understand that this is a relationship we have with Jesus Christ. Understand as God blesses us more, we have more responsibility. Understand that when we give our lives to Jesus Christ, He becomes the owner. He becomes the kurios, the Lord, the master, not a dictator, 
but a God who owns you, a God who bought you, not with silver and gold, but with His precious blood. I taught on Sunday morning in our church that the most precious th thing you have in your life, outside obviously of, 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 of the Holy Spirit, is your faith. It's more precious than silver and gold. It's something you don't want to lose. It's something you don't want to give up for anything. Not for a boyfriend, not for a girlfriend, not for a lifestyle. Because Jesus himself said, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and in the process loses himself? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What is Jesus saying? He says, what is the price for your salvation? Yeah, for Jonah, it's not one of the sins we would list in the Bible. The sins of commission. Thou shalt not. It is the sin of omission. He's omitting responsibility to go preach to Nineveh. Because God is a merciful God, even those though or even though those Assyrians were so evil and brutal, God still loved them. And that's the most amazing thing in the world that God loves the sinner. That God so loved the world that you and me, the worst kind of sinners. That he, sent his, that he sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into this world, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. God never sent His Son for those that were whole. He sent His Son for those that were sick, for those that were messed up, for those that made mistakes, for those who were the worst kind of rebels in this world. You see, my dear friend, there is no righteous but one, and His name is God. Even your good works will not make you righteous. Going to church from your mother's womb will not make you righteous. The Bible says we were all born in sin. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. The Bible says God demonstrated His love while we were sinners. He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us. I want to tell you tonight, no matter where you are, who you are, God loves you. And 2,000 years ago, He sent His Son. I don't want to say Jesus is like the whale, but I want to say He's God's safety net because He was prepared before the foundation of the earth. Long before God created Adam and Eve, God already prepared that Jesus would come as a safety net. God's hand of mercy, God's hand of kindness, like that trapeze artist, in case you miss it, in case you fall. There's going to be a safety net and you are going to bounce back. You are going to get back on your feet. You are going to recover all. I'm going to turn your mistake into a miracle. I'm going to turn your setback into a comeback. That's the God that we serve. A God of grace and a God of mercy. A God of loving kindness. Oh, come on, say amen tonight in Jesus' name. This is the gospel. Every one of us have run away from God. We all did. We were all born in sin. Maybe as a believer, there were times you ran away from God. But God never moved. Like people always say, Pastor, I found God. I say, no, He found you. God was never lost. God is always the same. He's constant. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change according to your behavior. Now think about this, that, that God himself sends out a storm to redirect Jonah because God loves the people of Nineveh. What does that say to us? That once we are born again, our lives are not just about us. That we have the commission and we cannot omit our responsibility or it would be the same as Jonah to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with our world. Mark 16, 15, Jesus said, Go into all the world, preach the gospel to every creature. Your world is your friends, your relatives, your family, your neighbors, those at school with you. Those are your friends. And they should know that you are a follower of Jesus Christ. Because if salt loses its savor or flavor, it's worth for nothing. But to be cast out on the dung hill, to be trodden under the foot of man, this is not the time to go into hiding like Jonah. Your world needs you. God needs you. 
You have been called and you have been assigned by God for this hour to be vocal about your faith and to share Jesus Christ with your world. Come on, say amen and give him a praise. Hallelujah. So, so, so Jonah has a, has a prejudice problem. Are you getting this? You know, I've had, and, and I don't have a goat minister, so I'm one myself. I love people. And I don't, I used to see black people different to white people. Fact. I was raised that way. And then Jesus changed me. I've had, listen, leaders of denominations, and they talk to me privately, they say, what must we do to grow our church? I say, open your doors. Now, just listen. You know, when we opened our doors in Bloemfontein, when that church started, and it was a lily white church, and black people started coming, how many white people left the church with this? I want to be with my people. I want to be in a church and serve God with my people. Think about that. Wie is jou mense? Hulle wat Afrikaans praat soos jy, rarig, is dit jou mense. Wie is jou mense? Hulle wat jou vel pigmentatie het, jou mense? Dan wat van enig as jy dooi, as jy sterf? Because you're leaving this earth suit behind. So if, if we are going to be together in heaven, South Africa, we've got ground to make up. We better get along down here. We better begin to testify to the grace of God. We better open our churches and allow people to come from every tongue, every tribe, and every nation. We have to put our prejudice aside. We have to elevate Jesus above our political affiliations. We have to elevate Jesus above our ancestors elevate Jesus above our language and our culture. We have to lift the name of Jesus up above every other name because there will be no healing outside and apart from Jesus Christ because He is the way and the truth and the life. Not part of it. He's not the addition. He is God's plan of salvation. He is God's plan of redemption. He is God's interjection into a sinful world. He is God reaching into the world. He's the hand of God reaching into the world. He's God Himself putting on flesh. He's God that dwells among us. He's Emmanuel. He says, He that has seen me has seen the Father. And He went about doing good. He went about forgiving sinners. He went about feeding the poor. He went about healing people. That's the Jesus we serve and the Jesus we need in South Africa. Not religion. I want to close because I know many of you are cold and I respect that. Tarshish. Not Tashas. Misschien is your first name Tasha. Not Tasha. He runs, listen, he runs from the presence of God, from the plan of God, from the purpose of God. He runs to Tarshish. Tarshish is a familiar place. Tarshish is a place where he's been before. Tarshish is a place where he seeks comfort. Tarshish is a place where he goes to hide. Where do you hide when there's a storm? Where do you hide when things become difficult? Where do you hide when you are lonely? He runs away from God. But God is there. And God brings His prophet back. And tonight I believe God wants to bring you back. You may think you're okay, but you better hear me tonight. If you have not surrendered all to Jesus, there is something that's going to take you away from God. It may be a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. It may be something this world offers you. John the Apostle says, Do not love the world, neither the things that are in the world. 
For if any man loves the world, the love of the Father is not on him. The lust of the eye, the lust of the flesh, the pride of life. That doesn't mean you should not have ambition to do something great for God. But he says this world is not our inheritance. This world is not what we live for. We don't sell out to this world. We are sojourners. We are pilgrims. We journey through this life. Our lives are as a vapor. Our lives are but a moment. Yet today, gone tomorrow. I hear every week young people who die. One of our young security people, 24 years old, just dropped down dead. One of the gym instructors the other day, also in his early 20s, just dropped down dead. Seven-year-old boy last week on a quad bike or 12-year-old boy on the farm in a bucky, on a quad bike against a bucky, dead. Death is all around us. It's not something we should fear, but it's something we better be ready for. Because it will come, the Bible says, as a thief in the night. If Jonah did not repent, listen, he would have died in that whale's belly. But he came to his senses and he cried out to God and he repented and he said, God, I'm sorry. God, I will worship you. God, I will, I will do what I promised you, Father. And what did God do? God spoke to that fish and the fish vomited him out on dry land. I'm here to tell you tonight, if you will turn to Jesus Christ, God is going to secure your future. God's going to talk to that opposition. God's going to talk to that storm and that whale, those digestive juices. That opposition will be silenced and you are going to come out and you are going to land on your feet on dry ground and your future will be brighter than ever in the name of Jesus Christ. But you have to make up your mind that God is the way. He's not part of the way. He's the way. I'm not going to do drugs with my friends no more. I'm not going to do marijuana with my friends no more. I'm not going to sell my body to anybody no more in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm not going down to Joppa. I'm not going down into the belly of a ship. I'm not going down to Tarshish. I'm coming back to God in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm giving my life to Jesus Christ tonight to follow Him and to serve Him as I committed many years ago. So the Lord speaks to the fish and the fish vomits him out on dry land. And here God comes again. And God says, Jonah, he says, here I am. And God says the same thing to him. God says, now go to, jo go to Nineveh. Because God will not change. God will not change his mind about you. There's a whole sermon in that. But for tonight, God won't change his mind toward you concerning how he loves you and concerning the fact that there is nothing you can do that will separate you from the love of God. All you need to do is hear his voice. And like Jonah, not leave the stubbornness and the idolatry which is our pride. And be that broken person. And say, here I am, God. I give it all to you. And that's what he did. I mean, think about it. I don't want to belabor the point, but think about it. For 40 years, he's known as the gentle dove. He's a gen he has a gentle personality. Politically, he's right. Politically, he talks against the Assyrians. Politically, the Jews love him. He's their prophet. And then God gave him an assignment that messes his mind. God tells him to go to preach to his enemies. Is that not what God did? He died for his enemies. He died for us while we were sinners. We were there when Jesus was crucified. We were part of the mob. And God says, forgive them. For they know not what they do. And that is what God says to you tonight. It doesn't matter what you've done, where you've been. God says, my arms are open wide. I forgive you. I give you a new beginning. I give you a fresh start. No matter how low you are, no matter how far you have fallen, no matter what you've done in your tasks, no matter how many times you've turned your back on God, God says, I am calling you back to myself. I love you. I'm not finished with you. I'm not about to abandon you. I'm not about to give up on you. 
But I need you, Jonah, to listen to me. I need you, Jacob, to listen. I need you tonight to listen, Moses. I need you, Adam, to listen tonight. I need you to come to your senses as Jonah did. Before life takes you to a place where you don't want to be. Because life has a way to do it. And I've seen, unfortunately, some people, the only time they cry out to God is on their deathbed. Before that, they thought they were invincible. Then suddenly, accident, bam! And suddenly, God helped. And God helps them, saves them. They die, they go to heaven. You don't need something like that. You don't need a tragedy. You don't need a storm for God to get your attention. But listen, very carefully, that God loves you enough to allow a storm to bring you to your senses. You don't need a storm. 2,000 years ago, God made the ultimate statement of love. When He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, into the sea of humanity to bring peace and healing to your soul, to make sense of this world, and to bring you back to Himself. I want every head bowed, every eye closed. No one moving now, please. You're sitting here tonight, you say, Pastor, I'm that Jonah you're talking about. I need to restart. I need to come back to God. I need a new beginning. Forget your friend now. That restless teenager next to you, forget that person. You know, when I got saved, my two best friends sat with me and we were wild munch. And uh, they never responded. I did. Their lives ended in tragedy. I thank God that He's kept me for these 38 years. And I pray by the grace of God He's going to keep me many, many more years. But it all started with the one decision where I realized, hey, I am lost. I need God. Maybe you've become like one of the prodigals. Maybe your wife doesn't even know it. It doesn't matter. You need your conversation with God tonight. And you need to surrender, re-surrender your life, your heart to Jesus. So God can put you on a safe place. Jesus himself. Every head bowed, every eye closed, no one moving. You say tonight, that's me. I need a fresh start with God, a new beginning. I want to surrender all to Jesus. If that is the desire of your heart, quietly, wherever you are, just lift your hand. I want to say a prayer for you, please, all over this place. Just raise your hand up high. Lift it. Lift it. Lift it. Many hands everywhere. Just raise it, raise it, raise it, raise it. Raise it. Raise it. He loves you. He loves you. I'm preaching a message in our church Sunday on eternity. God spoke to me about many things. I want to tell all the pastors, stop preaching these feel-good messages right now. Teach people what matters right now. Bring God's people back to Himself. Stop your... And here said, you know, not have to tell come on. This is the for now. The fact that you here is betekent God that you here brought. Want ek beloof jou vanavond. Ek weet nie of ek so gekom het as ek nie gepreek het nie. Okay man, is my vlees wat praat. Dis nou die Johanna buite wat praat. God praat met jou. Hier binne, voel dit. Jou hart klop. Kom my broer. Een gebed. Verander jou hele leven ander jou eeuwigheid. Jy het nog nie hand opgetel nie. God praat met jou, tel jou hand vanaf op. Nou in Jesus naam. Tel hem op. Dankie, dankie, dankie. In Jesus naam. In Jesus naam. Amen. Amen. Please work with me. I know it's a public event, but please. This is important. Jonah had a journey away from God, then he had a journey back to God. The reason we profess Jesus publicly is because our 
It's our journey back to God. And then we get baptized, which is our public declaration of our, of our faith. So I want us all to stand right now, please. Just stand with me. Stand on me as you come. Many, many, many of you have raised your hands, please. I'm going to ask you right now to take your personal belongings. If you have a blanket, bring a blanket with you, because otherwise somebody else will think it's a blessing left behind for them, okay? So all over this place, many of you have raised your hands. Many of you brought your friends. Your love and your encouragement will bring your friend to Jesus tonight. You reach out to your friends. So I'm going to ask you right now. You raised your hand. You did not. You want to get right with God tonight? Don't lose this moment. I want you to take your personal belongings so it doesn't disappear. Leave your seat wherever you are. There are ushers that will show you. And I want you to walk down to this area here in the front. Just wait, wait, don't clap yet. Don't clap, listen. It's very wet down here and very slippery. So walk slow, please. We don't want anybody to fall. So all over this place, if you want to commit your life to Christ, recommit your life to Christ, leave your seat right now. And walk down to the field here in the front. Come on, let's clap our hands as people are coming. Come on, you walk, 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 walk. Come on, George, tonight. Come on, tonight. Here I am. Come on, dear. Bring your broken arm. Bring your broken arm. See broken arm. Lift it. Come on. Be like Joshua, who said to the people, "You are still deciding whether it's a good thing to serve God." But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord our God. Come on. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord our God. Come on. Come on, young person. You could be the first in your family, the first in your bloodline. Respond to the love of Jesus tonight. Here I am.
wil vir jou sê, wat aan die stadion ontstaan, jy staan miskien vanavond en kyk en en wonder wat doen aan jong mense ek was 17 jaar oud gewees toe ek my hart vir die heren gegee 17, hoeveel 17 jaar er gestaan hier vanavond how many of you are 17, lift your hand And my life changed totally. Totally. I was bound by alcohol, marijuana, mandrax, racism, anger. And I prayed the prayer that I'm going to lead you in tonight and everything changed in me. I want you to close your eyes, put your hand on your heart and I want you to pray this prayer because God is watching. I want you to pray this right now and say, Lord Jesus, tonight, I give my life to you. I open my heart and I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. Please forgive my sin. Wash me in your blood. Give me the power to be a child of God. I believe with all my heart that you died for my sin. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are alive. Tonight, I surrender all to you. My spirit, my soul, and my body. And I thank you for a new beginning tonight. In Jesus' name. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your healing. I receive your deliverance. And right now, I forgive every person that sinned against me. Thank you for hearing my prayer and for bringing me back to you. I'm home. I'm your child. I will live for you. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen, and amen. Come on, let's give him a praise. The Bible says the angels in the heavens rejoice. Hallelujah. Come on, we give him a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Please listen. We have to stand for God. We have to stand for God in this hour. Stand for God. Go to your church, whatever your church is, go to your church, be part of your church, support your pastor, and let's raise the level of Christianity in South Africa to a place it's been higher than it's ever been in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, I love you, George. Thank you for being here tonight. You're special. You are special, all of you. Pastor Nas. Come on, George. Let's give it up for the Lord Jesus Christ tonight. Let thanks, let's thank Pastor Ad for such a powerful and anointed word tonight. We love you, Pastor. We thank God for you in Jesus' name. We just want to spend a brief moment with you. We know it's cold. We're not going to keep you long. We would like, just like to get your name, your telephone number. We'd like to explain the decision you've just made, give you some short instructions. So we'd like to ask you just for a moment, the buses and the combis will wait for you. Please turn to your left my right and please follow those people with the red shirts and the lady waving a hand over there come on please turn to your left my right and just for a moment we would like to spend with you right now please in jesus name come on let's clap for them as they go tonight let them remember this moment let them remember this moment as a memory please don't go back to your seat Kom aan, moet asjeblief nie nou terug gaan na jou sitplek toe nie. Kom aan, ons stap vir Jesus, ons staan vir Jesus Christus. In ons generatie in Jesus naam. Come on, look at all these young people getting saved. God is raising up a new generation. God is raising up the generation that will plunder hell and populate heaven. Here in the garden roots and all over South Africa. Come on, let's continue to clap for them. 
Hallelujah, what an amazing altar call tonight. What an amazing move of God right here in the Otaniqua Stadium here in George tonight. Come on, just for a few more moments, let's clap for them. What an amazing altar call tonight. Come on, let's thank Jesus for what He's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, what an amazing time we are having in God's presence. We'd like to th once again thank each and every one of you that came for the sake of the weather. We've kept the formalities short and sweet. But I do want to say a special thank you to all the CRC pastors that have supported, that have prayed, that have contributed, that have given, all of you that have sent volunteers to help. We thank God for you. The experience, the unity in the vision like this is an incredible experience. And we know that the harvest events in the rest of the year will be bigger and better and on a whole nother level in Jesus' name. So we thank God for you. Also, every other George pastor, Dumini, that supported. And then once again, all the volunteers Everybody from everywhere, many other CRC churches supported, every usher, every altar worker, every media volunteer, too many people to name. We thank God for you once again. And then thank you for being here tonight. Those watching online, thank you for joining us tonight. I want to encourage you to go back to your church as Pastor Ut said, support your pastor, uh, serving that vision, build that church. If you don't have a church, come and visit us at CRC George on 9.30 on a Sunday morning at CRC Morsel Bay on Sunday mornings. We are a move of God here in the Garden Route. And we are serious about standing for our Lord Jesus Christ and fighting for this holy ground in our country. We want to uh, ask you just for a moment uh, as we close the service, there's a brief announcement. And then I, the CRC music team is going to lead us in some more praise and worship. Is that okay, guys? Come on, two and a half years ago, we had a short praise and worship. Let's spend some time worshiping God with the amazing CRC music team. We love you. See you again next year in Jesus' name. Have a wonderful evening.